Good morning, everybody. We are back live here from the Bird House, and we are now into July. So that means a lot of baby birds are out there. So we'll show you some of the photos of baby birds that you can see out there right now. There's some butterflies floating around in fields out there, all kinds of fun and different insects. And always, as always, we want to know what kind of things you're seeing. So you can put those in the comments. If you have any questions, you can throw those in there too, or you can just say hi. So um, we always love to know who's on. So you can say hi in the comments and let us know what kind of things you're seeing, especially if we're, as we go on in the presentation here and talking about um, butterflies. Curious if anyone has seen any monarch butterflies yet. I haven't heard any reports of those yet, but the milkweed is in bloom right now. It's, it's starting to bloom, so they should be in our area. So let's get started. Um, as far as bird nesting goes, right now we are in and getting into goldfinch nesting season. So they are one of our latest nesting songbirds. They don't usually start nesting until um, certain plants like thistle have gone to down. So they don't start nesting until right about now in July. And um, they'll have one brood a year. And this is what their nests look like. So if you have one of the nesting balls that we have here at the store, that's a all natural cotton, you might see now that the goldfinches are going towards it, whereas earlier in the season, you probably had sparrows and, and other birds going towards that nesting material. But right now, the goldfinches really like it um, because um, they are starting to nest. So very late nester for our area. One of the reasons for that is that they eat exclusively seeds. So a lot of birds will switch their diet to insects or they eat just insects. And the goldfinches just eat seeds. So that is their number one food source they very rarely eat insects so they nest later when there's a lot more seed availability out there for their nestling so that is your goldfinch nest right here and they are starting that process there are fledglings out there all over the place we get calls all the time about fledglings and here's some pictures of some of the common ones that you probably see in your yard. They tend to be kind of scruffy. They've got feathers all over the place. They look like they have, you know, giant, giant beaks that they're still growing into. And a lot of the times you can see them hopping on the ground or they might be kind of tucked away in a shrub, just sitting there really quietly. That's totally, totally normal. So if you see something like that, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, there's that's just part of the fledging process. They'll, um, they'll, they'll be on the ground for a few days. The parents still come and feed them. And then they're on their, their own as far as finding their own food after a few days. So just want to make sure if you do see these guys, you know, you give them their space. If you, if there's neighborhood cats or anything like that, definitely want to shoo them away, keep an eye on them. Uh, but it's totally normal to see a, um, a bird on the ground this time of the year, especially if they look scruffy like, like these guys do here in this picture. Um, there are house sparrow babies out there. They can have two to three broods a year, according to the books, although some of you have said uh, that they've had way more than that in a certain year, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's more than that. And this is a, a pretty common thing you'll see right now at your feeders and probably throughout the rest of the summer and into the fall are these little babies hopping around with their parents and begging for food. They'll keep their mouths open, they'll flap their wings, and so there's lots of baby sparrows out there. <clears throat> there's also a lot of young morning doves. They can have two broods a year, and this is what the young morning dove looks like, a little bit more speckled than the adult. If you're curious about how many broods a year birds have. They're all listed in this Birds of New York book, so this is a really good reference. If you're curious, you know, how many birds do cardinals have? Morning doves, goldfinches, any of that kind of stuff. Every bird in here, um, it tells you how many broods they have a year and then how many eggs are in each brood as well, usually within a range. Um, cardinal, or sorry, robins, lots of robins out there. Robins can have two to three broods a year, and this is what the young ones look like. Very, very speckled. Um, they will sometimes have feathers sticking out of the top of their heads, so they look kind of silly. Um, here's a photo of a robin kind of tucked into a shrub there, sent in by Chris. And here's some that are kind of tucked away in a bush, about to fledge after being about two weeks old, which is pretty common for songbirds. They're in the nest for about two weeks, and then they're out into the world. So. Here's another young 
robin here. So lots of them around. They nest in all kinds of different places. And uh, you probably will see some of them this year. Fledging blue jays are pretty funny. Um, they look like they're growing into their feathers, as which they are. Um, a lot of the time their tail feathers are really short and stumpy like this. So don't be surprised if you see a little blue jay fledging uh, in your in your yard. So really cute little guys there. And then bluebirds, lots of you guys reporting bluebirds. These are, uh, here's an adult male to the left and then three fledglings there and they'll stick around with that family group all summer long. So you might have multiple broods of bluebirds uh, in the year and they can have two to three broods here where we are in upstate New York. And um, the youngsters will stick around to help raise the, the following broods. So you might end up at the end of the season with quite a few bluebird babies around. Here are some baby photos, if you will, that have been sent in to us over the years. This is an Eastern Toey fledgling. Um, sometimes you can find them underneath your feeders. So this is sent in from Bob, who said heard an Eastern Toey singing and singing close by, but was surprised to see a young Eastern Toey there were a few around and dad was keeping a close eye on them. So that's your Eastern Toey. This is a really cool photo. This is a chipping sparrow, which is the little one here, feeding a cowbird. And the cowbird is the large one to the left. So the cowbird is that nest parasite where the female will lay her eggs in the nests of other birds. And then those birds will incubate the eggs and raise the young. And here's a fine picture of that, even though the chipping sparrow is much, much smaller then the cowbird, uh, they will still raise it like their own. So you might see that if you see a very small bird or a bird that doesn't quite look like all the rest of the little ones, all the other fledglings, could very well be an eastern, uh, sorry, uh, a brown-headed cowbird getting fed by its parent whose nest the egg was laid in. So so look for that. If you, if you see something that looks a little off um, with the, the parent and the babies, could very well be the cowbird. Pretty interesting stuff there. Here's another photo of it as well. The cardinals are, are pretty funny when they are fledging and, and leaving the nest. They can have one to two broods a year. This is a juvenile. They look a lot like the, um, the, the female, but sometimes their bills are gray like this. Like when they first, uh, when they're, they're first leaving the nest, it takes them a bit to get that kind of reddish orangish bill. So that's one way you can tell it's a juvenile, not a female, is with that gray bill. So um, there's another photo sent in uh, a couple years ago, I think, from Bob of a, a fledging uh, cardinal. And then this is the red bellied woodpecker juvenile and you might see those coming to your feeders now too they have that speckled back just like the adults do um, but it takes them a while to get that red on the top of their head so uh, keep an eye out for the red-bellied woodpecker youngsters as well as the other woodpeckers too and we've been getting reports of lots of wrens lots of wren babies that are fledging so uh, be on the lookout there's a lot of baby birds out there as far as other birds you can look for now that we're in the summer months the yellow-billed cuckoo and the black-billed cuckoo are out there. Um, you might hear them before you see them. And I can actually play you their songs if I pull up the Merlin app, which is fantastic and great for um, not only identifying the birds that you are hearing, but you can use it as a field guide and uh, listen and, and pull up each bird by species. And you can yourself see what they all sound like and look like. So here's the yellow-billed cuckoo, and that's the one I've been hearing more so this year around, but they are both around, and this is what their song sounds like. So that is the yellow-billed cuckoo. There's also a black-billed cuckoo, and this is what the black-billed cuckoo sounds like. So they tend to be pretty secretive, so you might just hear them and not see them. But they love caterpillars, so they eat a lot of tent caterpillars. They eat a lot of the spongy moth, or used to be known as the gypsy moth caterpillars. So they can be found high up in the trees feeding 
off those caterpillars. But if you happen to have tent caterpillar nests in your yard or nearby, keep an eye out on that because they might just be there pecking away at all the different caterpillars. So pretty cool birds that are around this time of the year. Um, mockingbirds, people are reporting mockingbirds, um, singing their hearts out, as well as gray catbirds still coming to feeders, eating jelly, um, bringing their young about. So gray catbirds definitely still in the area. And the other mimic, the brown thrasher, still around singing and singing and singing. So those three are all still here and still being seen in backyards. And then there's the red-eyed vireo, and this is one you probably won't see very often, but you can hear them. They're very, very chatty, and they'll sing all summer long high up in the treetops. If you go hiking in any woods, you'll definitely hear them. This is what they sound like. They say their call sounds like, where are you? Here I am. It sounds like they're almost talking to themselves. I'll play it for you again. So it's not dissimilar from uh, sometimes in the woods, it can sound like a robin, uh, but they're not as sing-songy as a robin. Robin has more of a, a, a tune to its song and the red-eyed vireo sounds more like it's talking to, to itself. And I'll play you it one more time, why not? On this, now I'm using this identifier lyric card, which has all the different bird calls on it. So that's the red-eyed vireo. So they are around here all summer long and there are different owls. And if you're local to the upstate New York area, we just um, have the new copy of Upstate Gardener's Journal, which came out this week, I believe. And inside we have an article about the different owls that you can find here in the summer months. So this is absolutely free. You can pick it up at our store and a lot of other stores in the Rochester area, not only Rochester, but Buffalo and Syracuse too. So if you're interested in learning about the three most common owls that you will see in here this time of the year, we have an article about that in there. And those three are going to be these three right here, the barred owl, which is expanding its range. And they are very chatty all summer long. And I'll play their call here. <coughs> It's that who cooks for you, who cooks for you all, all that you guys are probably pretty familiar with. Then there is also the great horned owl, which sounds like you, uh, you awake me too. So they are around all summer as well. And then there's the little screech owl. So these are the top three you're most likely to hear. The first two are owls that are considered hoot owls. It sounds like they're hooting. The screech owl has more of a horse's whinny of a call. And it sounds like this. So listen for them all summer long. They are around. Um, some photos that you guys have sent in over the past couple of weeks. Um, really cool photo here of a rare bird for our area, the clay colored sparrow. This was sent in by Mark, a couple photos of that. So this is a rare bird for the area that he happened to see. And then some Menden Ponds birds, a hooded warbler, a couple of great photos of that. And this one looks like it's singing its little heart out. Um, indigo bunting. And this is one you might see at your feeders here and there. They like little seeds like millet and niger. So uh, not super common at feeders, but they do come in. And scarlet tanager, beautiful, beautiful bird that's here during the summer months. Uh, and again, another bird like that red-eyed vireo that you'll find in the forest. So really beautiful photo there of a scarlet tanager. And then um, here's some grassland birds um, that he sent in photos of. One of my favorites here, the bobolink, sitting, um, this was taken in Avon and sitting on a little barbed wire fence there. So there's a couple photos of the male bobolink. This is a grassland bird. They nest in the grass. Um, so if you go by any large open fields or wildflower meadows, keep an eye out for these bobolinks. They love that tall, tall grass. And here are some more bobolinks. And then also, 
a flying eastern meadowlark, another uh, another grassland bird. The eastern meadowlarks are in big, big decline, so it's really good to see some photos of them locally. So this is a eastern meadowlark flying around in Avon. Another grassland bird here is the savannah sparrow. Savannah sparrows have that little patch of yellow between their bill and goes over their eye, so that's how you can identify them. <clears throat> it's a pretty good characteristic that differentiates them from, say, a song sparrow. And then an American kestrel, also another grassland bird, probably on the hunt for large insects. They love those big grasshoppers and that kind of a thing. Um, it's also uh, dry, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, lightning bug season, and uh, there's lightning bug, firefly season, whatever you want to call them. They are starting to come out, and um, this is what they look like. So a lot of the times you see them glowing in night, but you might not be sure of what they look like during the day. And I see these all the time in my garden during the day. So this is your typical dragonfly, or <laughs> I keep calling them dragonfly, fireflies, and what they look like. But not only do the adults glow, they have that, uh, that glowing abdomen there, but their, um, their larva also grow, so, or glow. So if you, um, at night, if you're looking in your lawn, assuming you don't do, use any kind of chemical sprays, um, that'll kill them off. But if you look at your lawn in the evening, you might see little glowing things kind of crawling around. And that is this firefly larva, and they're actually quite voracious. So they'll go after other insects. Um, they eat quite a few things. So um, pretty cool thing to have, and it's really good for your lawn as far as keeping pests away. So the firefly larva here um, also glow, which is pretty cool. So keep an eye out on your lawns at night, and you just might see some of that glowing, uh, kind of going through your, your lawn. They'll kind of crawl around at night to hunt, and they have that glowing aspect to them as well as the adults. So it's firefly time, definitely. And it's also uh, caterpillar season, butterfly season, giant silk moth season we're getting into. Some caterpillars that you can see out there right now. This is um, one that you don't want to see around, but you just might. This is the spongy moth caterpillar. Uh, which has been renamed from the gypsy moth caterpillar. Um, they are known to completely defoliate trees and forests, so not really something you want to see around. So this is one, an introduced species. It's one of those that you could squish if you, if you so choose to. And this is what the adult looks like. It can be hard to differentiate this adult from other moths, but the caterpillar is pretty easy to differentiate. It has those blue dots on its back, <clears throat> it has these red dots that go down its body, whereas the tent caterpillar has kind of a stripe that goes down its back. And the spongy moth caterpillar doesn't have that really bright, bright, bold, white stripe. So tent caterpillar is native. Um, this is a good one for those cuckoos to eat. So not necessarily something you want to see in your yard, your yard either because they can defoliate a tree um, or part of a tree, but they do make really good food for the birds. Some moths to be out on the lookout for. There are some day flying moths out there like the hummingbird clear wing moth. Keep an eye out on your blooming flowers. If you see something that looks like a hummingbird but it's a little bit off, it could very well be the hummingbird clear wing moth, which is a mimic of the hummingbird. It looks a lot like it as far as how it flies and how it hovers over flowers. And I've been seeing a lot of these out there. This is called the Virginia Centucha moth. So it's very dark in color, but then it also has an iridescent blue back and there, there's some iridescent blue in its wings and it has this orange head here. So they are out in big numbers and they are day flying moths. So you can see them if you go out to any field or even out in the woods, you might just happen to see them. Um, Luna moths, people are reporting Luna moths right now. It's about that time. So be on the lookout. These giant silk moths don't live very long. They only live for a, a, about a week, if that. So uh, definitely you wanna look out at your porch lights and things like that in the evening, just to see you might happen to have something like a Luna moth out there. So really, really cool this time of the year when these things start to emerge. Um, there's also lots of butterflies out there. Um, this is a pearl crescent. This picture was sent in by Mary Ellen Kay. 
And if you're interested in but, uh, butterflies, we are having a butterfly walk this Tuesday at 10 o'clock over at Whitehaven Park. And it's completely free. And um, that is coming up this Tuesday on the 11th. We've got that going on. So excited about that. It's our first time doing it there. So it should be a lot of fun. Uh, also, if you're out in the fields and you see some orange butterflies, but they're not monarchs, could very well be this one. This is a great spangled fritillary beautiful butterfly there. Um, then there's also what are called eastern tail blues. And uh, this is a photo I took of one doing its kind of like its puddling behavior, where it looks like um, on this one, it's on some bird droppings, but it'll siphon off the nutrients from that. And this is what it looks like when it opens its wings. And you can see it's called the eastern tailed blue because it has these little tails on its hind wing there. So that's the eastern tailed blue. And then here's a, another photo of it with its wings closed. And you can still see that little tail there that pops out of its wing. So they are out there now as well. Um, this is a really bad cell phone photo I took of a common wood nymph. It's down there on the ferns. But this is what they look like a lot of the times if you uh, get a good look at them. Sometimes they're darker than this. They can be kind of variable. Um, they are out there right now. And then there's different frogs and toads. And if you're trying to find the calls of frogs and toads, um, there's not an app that I know of that plays them, but this identifier machine that I was playing the Red-Eyed Vireo song on, this thing has a card that is all the frogs. So this is the best thing I've seen as far as frog calls, frog and toad calls, um, to kind of get you an idea of what it is you're hearing. Gray tree frogs, if you're by any water or by any woods, you might hear them. And this is what they sound like. Been hearing a lot of those out there in the woods. And sometimes the gray tree frogs um, are green, which kind of might throw you off. There is a green tree frog, uh, but they are more in the south. So even if you see a tree frog here locally that's green, it's still a gray tree frog. The green frogs, if you're spending any time by water, by a pond, they are out and they are calling. This is what they sound like. So that is your green frog. Then there's, of course, the bullfrog, which can get quite, quite large. And they sound like this. So they are quite, quite loud. I'll play that one again. And it can be hard sometimes to tell the difference between the green frog and the bullfrog because there is overlap in size, the colors are really similar. So one way you can tell that isn't just size dependent is the green frog has this ridge that goes down its back from its eye, so that stretches down its back. And if you look at what's called its tympanum, that's its ear right here behind its eye, this circular thing right here that's gold that is not going to be any larger than the green frog's eye. So this, this frog has kind of a, a big one, but sometimes they're a little bit smaller, but it'll never be bigger than the frog's eye. But then if you look at the bullfrog, they don't have that ridge that goes down their back. It kind of curves along that tympanum, and they're, uh, which is quite a bit larger than the frog's eye. So that's how you can tell the difference between those two. And then of course there's the toad. Lots of toads are out there and uh, you can find them in the woods, in your backyards. And this is what they sound like. So they've got a nice little trill. So just some things to be out on the lookout for. And of course there's mammals out there too. This photo was sent in a while ago um by ed but we're hearing some reports of flying squirrels again so if your feeders are emptying out at night could very well be one of these flying squirrels so be ahead and look out for them too um so if you have any questions you can throw those in the comments or any sightings that you have we'd love to know what kind of things you're seeing um patty is on she says yesterday i spotted monarchs at the creek on horseshoe road out in durand so there are some monarchs coming back into the area which is awesome um, King Joffrey says, spotted three fledging cappers in my backyard yesterday. The mealworms are dissipating fast. Yeah, I believe it. If you have mealworms out right now, especially the live mealworms, 
they will get eaten very quickly by not only the adults, but the babies. So lots of fun to see who's eating the mealworms. Um, Bob is on and says, good morning. I have a couple of butterfly photos I'll have to send in, both new species for me. One looked like a dead leaf when wings were closed. Ooh, and <laughs> orange with black dots when open. Could be um, one of those uh, question mark or comma butterflies might be my best guess. Um, he says, my indigo bunting is just singing and singing. He's probably only second in singing to the gray catbird. So lots of birds singing in Bob's yard. Jen is on and says, good morning. Um, let's see, Ed is on and says, about a week ago, late at night, we had an IO moth land in the kitchen screen. Smaller than I thought. This was the first time we've seen one. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah, so um, this is a really good guide here. I'll look up IO moth in here. I want to say they're poisonous. I'm not totally sure. Um, this Kaufman Guide to Insects is the, the absolute best one I've ever seen. And it has so much stuff in it. And it's really easy to read and to go through. And let's see if I can easily find the Io Moth. Yes, I can. It's on page 240. And here it is. Oh, how cool is that? So that's this yellow one right here with those eye spots. And it's hard to tell because, um, you know, the screen size here. Let me, boop. Okay. So this book isn't that large and this is the actual size. So not a very huge moth, but really, really showy, really, really cool sighting there. So you never know what kind of things you'll see out there at night this time of the year. And now is, now is moth time. So if you're looking to see what kind of insects are out there, the best thing you can do is put out some kind of a, a white sheet and shine lights on it at night and you'll get all kinds of bugs coming to it. So um, something to do if you're looking for a, a, a summer activity. Um, Jen says Orioles and bluebirds with their fledglings are frequently visiting the feeders. So Jen's getting Orioles and bluebirds. And it looks like that's everybody's comments and questions for the day. Uh, we won't be live on Tuesday because we will be doing the butterfly walk. So if you're local to Rochester, that is at Whitehaven Park at 10 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday. And that's um, going to be a lot of fun. So step on out if you are local. And until then, have a great week and we'll talk to you next Saturday. Bye-bye.